Hi, my name is Tom and this video is going to talk a little bit about interfaces and what to do when during the interview they ask you about interfaces. When they ask me about interfaces I always say I use them all the time because I use the .NET framework and that's full of interfaces. But then I follow up with how I use interfaces with WCF and that scores me some points because you know WCF is such a big buzzword. If you your experience with interfaces has only been you know in college where you had to make some interfaces to demonstrate that you knew polymorphism and that was it you know that's understandable you really don't need to use interfaces on a day-to-day -day basis so stick with my it's in net and I use net but there's gonna be other questions just to make sure you know what an interface is and how you use it and why you use it so if you can see this example and understand it, you might have a little insight and that'll help you out. So an interface is just a collection of behaviors and you have a whole bunch of different classes and they can be completely different, but if they all implement this interface, then you're guaranteed that each one of those classes will do something with these behaviors or these functions. Let me show you an example. I got Visual Studio 2010 and adding an interface is really easy. Add new item interface and um, I don't have a very clever name for this so I'll just call it um, I info and I add it so here's an interface now the thing about an interface is that an interface only contains the signatures of the methods you want to use for example this method um, called get name returns a string. You don't put the code in there of how to get a name, you just say when you use this interface there's going to be something called get name and it's going to return a string. And any class that implements it, remember interfaces are implemented where classes are inherited. So anything that implements this interface is going to have a get name function and it's going to return a string. Guaranteed. It's going to have a what's up a function too. So um, I just watched the French Open, so this is going to be a little bit of fun with the French Open, which will totally date this video, and six months from now it won't make any sense, but for now it'll be funny. So I'm going to add a class, and that's going to be a class called the Federer class. And the way the imp to uh, implement a method is to just say colon. Uh, method name. So now I'm implementing this method, which means that this class has to do everything that's listed here. If it doesn't, it won't build. Watch. See? It doesn't build. So it's really easy to implement. This does it for you, actually. Boom. There's the method you need to do. So get name will return Federer. And what's up? What's up, Federer? Well, poor Feder, he's sad because he lost. So now that I've implemented those, see, builds. Of course, we need another class called Nadal. This Nadal class will implement this. Another interesting thing is that um, in C sharp, it's single inheritance. You can only inherit from one class, but you can implement as many methods as you want. That's a good interview question, so remember that you can implement as many methods. I'm sorry, implement as many interfaces as you want. Yes, you can implement as many interfaces as you want. one again more money okay now here's what's cool I have these two classes one's called Federer and these things could be completely different one could be about planets and one could be about oil research and one could be about cars and they could
could have all sorts of different methods and properties and uh, constants and whatever in them but what if they implement this method they all have that in common they're actually they're actually of that type i info believe it or not it's true i'll show you cuz i want to make a list of i info objects and then I'm going to add these guys to it, which wouldn't be possible unless they were iInfo and then I'm going to iterate over this list for each iInfo I'm going to do something, so I'm going to say console.writeLine um, hi, my name is, and it's I dot get name. See, because they use this, oops, because they use this interface, I can be assured that they're going to give me something. They have to make use of these methods. And I am dot what's up let's build it and run it so what we should see is we should see that something's wrong here what's going on uh, how many oh it's a method there we go and this is a method also there's some fine coding there. Okay, so when you instantiate an interface, the these uh, classes actually become a type of that interface. I put in a list. If we run it, look, and I'm sad. I lost. I won again. So there you go. So an interface. What does an interface contain? That's what they're going to ask you. It contains um, the function signatures. It can also contain properties. And if you want to go for bonus points, you can say things like it can contain events. But um, the signatures of the methods and properties is a great answer. What doesn't it have? It doesn't have fields. It doesn't have constants. It doesn't have the code that actually goes to those methods. They're public and they're abstract, but you don't have to say that because we know that. It has to be. And um, classes that implement it interface um, have to implement, have to do something with these methods, have to make them happen. And what's another good interview question? You can in, you can implement more than one interface. So if they ask you, um, getting back to how do you use interfaces day to day, you say, well, I use .NET, and .NET has lots of interfaces like I disposable, I enumerable, I enumerable. That's what makes our uh, list here possible. So hopefully this gives you a little uh, better idea of interfaces, uh, how they're used, maybe a couple of interview questions that you can field, and uh, good luck.